welcome. So today we're going to go over adding a management server to the Ivanti User Workspace Manager software package, um, formerly known as AppSense Desktop Now. So I've already uh, done a video on installing the product, um, so you might want to check that out. Uh, just uh, check out this channel and look at the other videos that are that are uh, available and you'll see it and while you're while you're at it why not subscribe right what the heck okay so i've already installed the user workspace manager software we've gone through that before so i'm not going to go over that again uh, what we're going to start at here is adding the instance for this server so this is a second server you know in many cases um I would say just about all cases. If you're using User Workspace Manager, if you're using this product uh, in an enterprise environment, in any type of production environment, you should have at least two management servers. Technically, the capacity, yeah, if you're a smaller shop, I mean, you don't need the capacity. You don't need it for capacity. I mean, you can do up to about 10,000 connections. So, I mean, that's fine. It's, it's just redundancy, right? It's just common sense. You need a second server in case the first one goes down. Now, the user doesn't get affected by having a management server go down. Uh, in, in other words, they don't notice it. They don't have any uh, visibility of it going down. It just affects your ability to send out new agents, configurations, and such. But, so technically, yes, you could get away with having one of them, and if it goes down, you just build a new one connected to the database, right? And you could do that. Uh, but I, I think having two makes sense. So when you do uh, create a second management server, there's a procedure that needs to happen there that a lot of people don't remember, and it's very important, and it's uh, it has to do with synchronizing the encryption keys. So I'm going to go over that process with you today. All right, so let's open up the SCU, the server configuration portal. We go ahead and log in. Okay, so this is the second machine that I've set up with AppSense with the user workspace manager. And I, the installation, when I did the installation, I only selected Management Center. I just wanted the management server itself to be installed here. Uh, no personalization. So I'm assuming that in this case, I'm not making a dual role machine. It's just going to be for management server. So that's why we only see management uh, listed here, not personalization. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do here is connect this server to the database now there's a couple ways we can do this the last time i did this installation you know i just went in and i did this uh from here i went in and created the database then i went into the management servers today i'm just going to go over here to the little red button uh, this is this is what probably your instinct is going to be to go to is to hit this button right which is going to just link you down to uh the uh, default instance now this is normally where we're going to set up the IIS instance, but there is no database connection available here, right? Because you know, as far as this instance is, uh, or this server is concerned right now, there, there's no database and you won't find one there. So we're going to say create new, even though we're not creating a new database in this case, we're going to be connecting it to an existing database. It's still the same language, create new database. You see how it jumped back over to database management, that's where we would have went if I did it manually, right? So, okay, so friendly name, this is gonna be uh, management. Now, my server name, now right now what I'm on, I'm on DC01 at the moment, is my local server that I'm on. Um, there's no database here. I'm going to be connecting it to the database that I already created, which is on server 01. So I'm going to type in server 01. Now the configuration account uh, is, 
Originally, when you do the installation, the configuration account is what creates the database. It uh, needs full either sysadmin on the database server, or at the very minimal, you need uh, DB creator and security admin on this account when you're first installing it. But now that we've installed the database, the database is there, uh, you could have gone back, and this happens all the time because DBAs, they don't want you to keep, if they're, if they're managing the server, they don't want you to have an account with sysadmin in most cases. They, they maybe gave you that capability just to create the database or uh, maybe they created you an account or maybe they typed in their password, whatever it might be. But once the database is there, you can have the DBA set you up with an account that has a DB owner. Right, so if you're if you're a, uh, a a DB owner on the account on this particular database on the the management server database, you'll have all the capability you need in order to connect another server to the database without having the capability of taking down the entire database server. So the, at this time, because we're doing a second server, the the very minimum that you need is DB owner on that database, the management server database. So we're going to use our, uh, we're going to use the administrator account in this case because this is a demo environment. And you can click the little check to make sure that you type your password correctly. Now it's going to go and look, query the database server and we see that there are two databases in there. One is the Avanti Management DB, and that's the one we want. So you select that, and now your service account, you'll remember when you did your original installation, you created a service account that's going to be uh, used on a, an ongoing basis by the, uh, the product. So this is something that needs to be, uh, you know, it, it's set up as a service account with uh, hopefully a password that doesn't expire or one that's managed very carefully. You don't want that password expiring and then locking out the account or whatever. So uh, in this case, our service account is FBN slash IWM dash system. Okay, so now we just took this server and connected it to the existing database. Now we see there is a database listed and we're now gonna have the opportunity to create a local instance on this server, right? You see that there's server 01, it's now showing up. There's the instance that's uh, available for server 01, the one that we created when we installed the, uh, the product originally. Now we're gonna be able to create an instance here. Now remember, um, we're gonna change this to anonymous for the authentication. Uh, again, you know, this is something that's a choice. If you're gonna be using hardware load balancer, uh, changing it to anonymous can just make your life easier. If you're a little bit more concerned about the fact that you're, you know, if it's a problem that you're changing the default level of authentication security, then, you know, just leave it the way it is at Windows. You'll just deal with some issues later on if you're using hardware load balancers. But, um, you know, if you're a tight security shop and people are getting nervous because you're doing this, don't worry about it. It's really not that big of a deal one way or the other. You'll work around it. Okay, so the database connection is to management, and we're going to go ahead and create our instance. And we're finished. Okay, so we now have a working connected instance to the original database on our second server, but we're not done yet. So this is the main point of this video because I think most people who did the installation originally couldn't have figured this out. Um, but this is the part that a lot of people forget about. For every 
management server that you add to your environment, you need to sync the encryption keys. Now let me show you what that means. So if we go down to server 01, because server 01 is our original installed uh, management server. So this was the first management server. It was the one that was created when we also created the database. So this one is where we're going to need to go first. And we're going to need to uh, look here at the encryption key status. Now we're going to notice that it's set. It, right now it's valid. That's good. We have an encryption uh, key on the machine. But we don't have a transfer key. Now this is what we need to add a second server or third or whatever. I mean, any, any additional management servers will require a transfer key in order for that server to become active on the database. So what we're going to need to do at this point is just click the store here. We're going to type in a password. Now this can be any password you want. It doesn't have to be the password you used previously. It's just a password. You just need to remember that password when you go to the other server. And I'll show you when we get there here. So the other thing to know about that, uh, storing that encryption key, is that it doesn't need to stay in there. Now, it, right now it's in the database. So, you know, it's, it's, it's captured that key into the database. What we're going to do here is go over to, to DC01. We're going to click on encryption. And you might be thinking, well, what, what is the purpose of this? Well, you don't want somebody be, who has administrative cr credentials in your environment, as, as an example, who would be able to do the installation for the management center uh, to just fire up a rogue management server in your environment. Because if you could connect that management server to the existing database, uh, you could potentially hijack the environment. You could send out your own configuration files to the endpoints and do whatever you want. So you don't want somebody to be able to do that. So this keeps you uh, that last step. It's that last step after doing the installation to make sure that somebody has to have access to the original environment in order to do it. Okay, so transfer key status present. Now we can click retrieve. And the password that we just set is the one we're gonna use. Now this is one thing that I wish they had um, added that I really liked about the uh, the SCU, the older version, and that is uh, there was, and, and obviously it's not so easy with a web interface in comparison to an app, like that was actually an app, but they, they would, um, when your encryption keys were not set, when you didn't sync the encryption keys on a new server, it would show up in the SCU uh, as highlighted, it would was I think it was highlighted in red, and it made it very obvious that something was wrong, that you hadn't done something. Uh, in this case, there really is no indicator, so you have to just remember. But you've now, what we did here is uh, we've gone ahead and uh, we've we've done our uh, synchronization of the two. Again, there's really no indicator, but uh, but it was successful. Now you can just go ahead and delete that key. Okay. And there's no problem with deleting the key because now they're synced. The two of them are synced together. We're good to go. That's just the transfer key that we're deleting. In the future, if you had to add another server, you just store a new key and just sync them all with the new key and bingo, you're, you're good to go. All right. So that's adding a second management server and making sure that you sync your encryption keys. Thanks for joining us.